Saturday morning, shoppers were put on lockdown here at the Walmart in Morgantown after a man shot a woman several times right here in the parking lot. The next few hours will be telling for the Maloney campaign as he has come within one point of acting Governor Earl Ray Tomlin in a recent poll. But because it's still an active investigation, they are not ready to say just yet what spawned this 22-year-old to claim the lives of five people, one of whom was six months pregnant. You may think it's just a coffee shop, but actually they're serving up homemade breakfast, sandwiches, and even serving beer. Let's check out what they had to offer. On this week's Restaurant Road Trip, we'll take you to a Preston County staple where you can get food, groceries, and even a bear trap. This is not just your average class. Students actually got to cut a piece of this car open. Yeah. The finishing touches are being put in place, and in the coming weeks, their new state-of-the-art facility will be fully operational. Albert, our viewers have had a lot to say about the smoking ban and have strong convictions for and against. Some feel it's a violation of their rights and others are anticipating clean air. But like it or not, come Friday, smoking in enclosed public places will be a thing of the past. Keep tuned in to 12 News and WBOY.com for any updates as we get them. Reporting in Morgantown for 12 News, I'm Kelly Rippin. Good evening and welcome to Weekend Live tonight. I'm Kelly Rippin. The identity of the man arrested at Friday night's accident on I-79 in Marion County has been released. Thanks, Jason. We'll start with a drive-by shooting this afternoon in Morgantown. The car narrowly missed a Harrison County resident when it crashed into his home Friday night. Another motorcycle accident this morning, this one in Marion County. Authorities are searching Preston County for a 13-year-old boy who's been missing since early Thursday morning. Students and Morgantown residents were put on alert late Friday evening after police received reports of a gunman near campus. Arts Alive on the Monongahela River was a huge success on this gorgeous weekend. Thousands of people stopped by. We'll get a final look coming up. We got up, got everything ready to go pick up Faith. We were uh, real excited to finally have her. Shannon Stafford was picking up her daughter Faith for their first unsupervised visit since settling a custody battle with her soon-to-be ex-husband. And the only thing that we, that she would ever say and talk about was Faith. Helms and Stafford had been dating for about eight months. They lived together in a home outside of Brewston Mills. I had her drop me off at the tire center, and uh, she gave me a kiss and hug and told me she loved me and told her I loved her and I'd see her in a minute. And uh, she was going to bring the baby in to change the diaper, and, and you know we were going to shop a little bit and then go home. But they never made it there. I just happened to walk up front, and everybody said there's a shooting. And there's a girl laying on the ground and. I knew. I, I just, I knew right then. When word of a shooter in the parking lot made it inside, the Walmart was put on lockdown. Uh, they wouldn't let me out, and I just finally just kind of forced my way out to get out there, and I, I just seen her laying there. Witnesses took action and got Larry Mitchell to the ground and held him until police arrived. According to Helms, Faith and her father were at the scene. Yeah, he was there. He was parading the baby back and forth in front of his, the mom, in front of Shannon. Helms, who lost his father in the Sago mine disaster, had recently taken a job as a miner to help provide for Stafford and Faith. My world just kind of crumbled, and my heart's in a thousand pieces. Stafford had become very close with the Helms family. She was on the phone with Nick's mother when the shooting happened. What kills me the most is that baby isn't going to hear her mom's voice ever again, and and uh, that's all I keep thinking about. We've lost a, a, a friend. Few words could describe what the Monongalia County Sheriff's Department has endured over the last week. On Friday morning, more than 200 departments came out in support of a brother killed in the line of duty. He's going to be missed by us, not only from the aspect of what he knew as a, uh, as a law enforcement officer, but the kind of friend that he was to everybody that he worked with. The procession included departments from across West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Tennessee, and Kentucky, 
Even officers from Missouri and a small department from Niagara made the trip to show support. We've had a uh, tremendous outpour from all the emergency services, not only locally here, uh, but across uh, the state, across the country. You know, law enforcement, we always say, is a family, and it really is. And anytime anybody loses an officer, it's, uh, it's hard. It's not hard just for them, but it's hard for everybody that's in that family. This is the first line of duty death for the Monongalia County Sheriff's Department in Sheriff Kistner's 34 years with the department. We just want to do it right. We want to uh, honor Todd the way he should be and uh, respect his family's wishes at the same time. Asked how the Mays are holding up, Sheriff Kistner says Friday's outpouring of support was overwhelming. They were okay until the ride in this morning and, uh, you know, of course we were talking and uh, uh, a lot of emotion and, and especially when we got close uh, to pulling in and his mother and father saw all the law enforcement units and everybody that was here and uh, it was just very hard for them. The city of Morgantown was recently named the first bike friendly city in the state of West Virginia. So what better way to celebrate than by participating in Bike to Work Day. The biggest advantage of bicycling to work is that um, you arrive at work wide awake and ready to go when other people are sort of stumbling in, you know, and looking for the coffee pot. You get out, you're, you're not in traffic, you're not getting angry being in traffic, you are reducing the traffic by not being part of that, that, that traffic that you're sitting in. Uh, you get to wake up uh, and uh, get a little exercise in and get someplace. Across the United States, cities took advantage of this beautiful day by honoring Bike to Work Day. A group of cyclers met early Friday morning at Hazel Ruby McQueen Amphitheater to spread the word, and they were joined by city manager Terrence Moore. One of the nice things that's happening in Morgantown is we're establishing bike parking around town. The group biked from the amphitheater to Mountaineer Station, WVU's multi-transportation facility that includes a bike storage room. I left the amphitheater at the same time as the cyclists, and they arrived just a few minutes after I did. It's sometimes quicker to get across Morgantown by bike than in a car. The more you bike the bike around town, the less you really want to spend time sitting in traffic. And it, it kind of, it's, it's enlightening. After you've done, done it for a while, you don't want to sit in traffic. You say, I can get there maybe a little bit slower, but not much. And, and I'm getting something out of it. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be National Bike to Work Day to start a new routine. And with summer gas prices on the way, you may even save a little bit of money. Reporting in Morgantown, I'm Kelly Rippin for 12 News.